off, it's raining, there is lightning everywhere and a lot later in the afternoon than I was hoping to be doing this. within minutes of shooting that last little clip from the car all hell broke loose so welcome to tonight's episode of postcards from the fringe uh, and it was brought to you by from a section of road uh, called the notorious Marlborough stretch now the stories of the Marlborough stretch date back many many decades uh, and I've driven uh, the road from Rockhampton to Mackay many many times However, for anyone who knows the road, there's a tiny little town named Marlborough. It's literally just a couple of houses. You almost blink or you miss it. Um, however, from Marlborough through to the sugarcane town of Serena, um, it travels closer to the coast um, from a beautiful big um, multi-lane, I think three-lane highway um, that was put in place in about 1984. But prior to 1984, the road used to cut um, much further inland now um, it is notorious for a number of reasons and before we go any further and i tell you all about the hell breaking loose let's first have a look at the the stories of the marlborough stretch uh, and why it has such notoriety the badlands the killing fields murder highway the horror stretch death alley or as it's often yet deceptively called, the Crystal Highway, due to the sparkling piles of broken windscreen glass that litters the broken bitumen. The Marlborough stretch, marking the old route between Rockhampton and Mackay, has attracted many less than favorable monikers over the years and is well and truly infamous. Over the years, prior to the opening of the Northern Deviation closer to the coast in the 1980s, Multiple grisly murders have occurred along its length, coupled with numerous unsolved disappearances, robberies, and assaults. To this day, long-haul truck drivers and locals refuse to stop along the stretch, especially during the night, with reports of ghost lights, phantom animals running in front of vehicles, and phantom figures hiding along the road verge being commonplace. The Marlborough to Serena stretch's notoriety predominantly dates back to the 1960s and 70s, during which time a swathe of brutal killings and attempted murders took place along its route, many either being centred around or involving an isolated outpost and campsite at Connors River and a long funnel creek 30 kilometres to the north. In June 1966, Two decomposing bodies were discovered trussed in chicken wire on the banks of Funnel Creek, the first found by teens on a picnic. Both men had been lured to the location from the Collinsville Hotel to the north on the promise of work to the south. Both men, Raymond Muir and John Smith, had been shot in cold blood before their bodies were dumped in the creek trussed in wire and weighed down by car rims. Subsequent investigation led to the arrest, trial and incarceration of their murderers, two men, for a crime notoriously dubbed at the time as the Funnel Creek Murders and described by one of the accused as as cold and deliberate as you like. Only months later, 
Two brothers and a mate pulled over near Marlborough to catch some shut-eye before venturing on at daybreak. During the night, an assailant spotted their vehicle, pulled over out of sight and returned to their car with a rifle. In what can only be termed a thrill kill, he fired indiscriminately into one brother sleeping alongside the car in a sleeping bag, then turned the weapon on the second brother inside the vehicle with fatal results. Promptly fleeing into the darkness on the injured mates charged from the vehicle in response. The assassin was eventually captured, tried for murder and attempted murder, and sentenced accordingly. He'd been residing at the Connors River camp and had been termed an aggressive psychopath. Not even 12 months later, in September 1967, Ron and Joyce Linfoot pulled off the road for the night with their caravan at Princester Creek on the Marlborough stretch. Stepping from the car to stretch his legs, a sniper's bullet slammed into Ron's lower back, dropping him to the dirt. His wife Joyce, startled, took a second sniper's bullet to the shoulder before she could react, and she dived back into the car. Ron managed to pull his rifle from beneath the car seat and began firing into the roadside verge as his wife ripped the car into gear. Clambering on board, Ron and Joyce made a beeline for Rockhampton, from which they were stabilised and subsequently flown to Brisbane. Ron remained paralysed from the bullet for the rest of his life, and two men were subsequently arrested and sentenced to life in prison. Finally, in March 1975, the body of Noel Weckett was discovered by a passing truck driver slumped within his car just south of Funnel Creek. He'd sustained a gunshot wound to both his neck and head, and his wife Sophia, who'd been with him on the trip to Rockhampton, was nowhere to be found. Her body was eventually located on the bank of Funnel Creek by a traveller who'd stopped with car troubles a week later. She too had been gunned down in cold blood, supposedly in a frantic effort to escape an unknown captor. As in previous cases, despite a number of blunders that almost saw the murderers walk free, two itinerant men and one woman were arrested, charged and sentenced for the double homicide. Given the stretch's dark history, can you really blame those who traverse this road doing so with at least a little bit of trepidation? With Cyclone Debbie's destruction of the Lotus Creek Roadhouse in 2017, effectively erasing the final remaining rest stop along the inland Marlborough to Serena stretch. The number of travellers utilising this route has diminished. However, the tales of its gruesome past remain ever present. Now, having had a bit of a look at the stories um, of the Marlborough stretch, the, the Horror Highway, the Crystal Highway, um, Murder Alley, regardless of what you call it, it's gone by many, many names. The plan was to stop at a couple of places along um, the old Badlands um, Horror Stretch Crystal Highway uh, and bring a couple of uh, snippet videos um, for all of you to watch. However, I really couldn't have anticipated what happened after I left Marlborough uh, and headed inland um, on this road. So again, the countryside is incredible. It cuts up through uh, rocky outcrops and road cuttings uh, and drops you down onto what they term the Brigalow Plain. However, after I'd shot that video in the car from earlier on in this video, um, literally within minutes, all hell broke loose. There was a biblical deluge, um, the likes of which I've virtually not seen. And that's saying something because I've driven virtually through cyclones up around Rockhampton, Mackay, Townsville uh, over the last couple of years. But the skies opened up, it poured down rain, um, there were lightning strikes landing into the Brigalow scrub either side of the car, um, you know, just rocking the car with the, the amount of thunder is just almost deafening. Uh, and as I drove further up the Horror Highway, um, I passed what was, uh, what almost looked like a bit of a shed, some kind of lean-to, it was incredibly difficult to see given just the torrents of rain that were pouring down within about 500 metres of passing whatever it was. Uh, the rain became so heavy 
that I literally couldn't see more than maybe four or five meters in front of the car. So in the middle of nowhere, and keep in mind that this road hasn't really been maintained that well. It's incredibly lumpy and bumpy and the car bounces around like you wouldn't believe. Um, there's a center line and, and not much of a lane either side of it. It's not curbed. Um, it's the typical boondocks out the back of nowhere kind of road. Um, but the rain was so heavy, I literally couldn't see and had to do a three point turn in the middle of the road. And I thought I need to go and find some cover um, to try and wait this storm out. Um, and whatever I had seen, maybe it might provide a little bit of cover. So I popped back, um, sort of did my three point turn, completely blind in either direction, praying to God that there wasn't another cattle truck coming. Um, and sort of slow, very slowly and carefully made my way back, only to find out that this structure, almost a ghost-like structure uh, in the torrential rain that I had thought I'd seen out of the corner of my eye, turned out to be the old Lotus Creek Roadhouse. Now, the Lotus Creek Roadhouse had been the only remaining stop, um, sort of rest stop along the, the horror stretch um, on the old Marlborough to Serena Road, but it was destroyed by Cyclone Debbie in 2017. Now, I'm gonna chuck up a little bit of a clip of um, my time at the Lotus Creek Roadhouse. I spent most of it in the car, given that even though I was slightly undercover in a bit of a lean-to, which had been the old petrol station, um, the rain and the wind were just phenomenal, but it abated just long enough for me to jump out of the car and get a very, very small clip um, of what the Lotus Creek Roadhouse looked like. Uh, there was a huge tree down over the roof. There was water pouring everywhere, um, but I think the clip speaks for itself. So I'm just going to chuck it up now. So having waited patiently um, for about 20 or 30 minutes for the rain to just slightly subside enough that there was a bit of visibility to move, start moving back up the road, given that at this stage the Lotus Creek Roadhouse is about halfway down that Mulberry to Serena stretch, um, literally out in the middle of nowhere and the sun was starting to go down and like everybody says, like all of the um, urban legends about the old horror stretch, you don't want to be caught on the horror stretch after dark. Um, I was incredibly keen to get out of there and, and travel, you know, the remaining 150 plus, you know, kilometers into Serena, heading towards Mackay. Um, I started moving back up the road. So eventually um, I crossed Connors River, um, where I was hoping to bring you guys a, a bit of a clip um, of Connors River, where the, the rest stop was in um, the old Connors River camp, um, a place that many of the gruesome murders that took place had a link with Connors River Camp. Um, however, it was still pouring down rain by the time I moved through there and we really wouldn't have gotten a decent video. Um, however, what I did do was I managed to sort of get out of the rain slightly, just enough by the time I hit Funnel Creek um, to get a few videos of Funnel Creek. Now, Funnel Creek had been the site of um, a double homicide in 1966. Uh, and again, um, very unfortunately, the body of Sophia Weckett uh, was found on the banks of Funnel Creek in 1975 from the double homicide that took place then, um, both her and her husband having been shot. So I'll chuck up right now just a couple of videos that were taken at Funnel Creek, just to give you a bit of an understanding of how remote um, and peaceful, I guess, um, at this time um, Funnel Creek was. It's you know, quite unbelievable to, to think that um, this one you know, incredibly beautiful place had taken, um, you know, so many horrible uh, occurrences had taken place there. So here are a couple of videos of Funnel Creek. So the rain's finally subsided a little bit. It's still um, relatively spinning down, so this one's only just going to be a quick one. Um, but we finally made it at least out of the massive deluge that we've come through on the Marlborough Serena Road to Funnel Creek. So Funnel Creek is just here behind me, so just a little single lane bridge and literally out in the middle of nowhere um, and the site of um, three, three separate murders. Um, so two, two in 1966, a double homicide, uh, and then um, again another homicide in 1975. So it's absolutely incredible 
um, people, the country that goes through here. It's just it literally, I think I've been past a couple of cars and um, maybe two or three cattle trucks um, in probably the last 200 kilometres. So um, it's a, absolutely the road less travelled. Um, but with that said, I'm going to jump back in the car because um, I'm starting to get pretty wet and don't want to have the phone out here. Just one last thought before I jump into the car. I'd just like to show you guys this. Um, the trees that go out over Funnel Creek are absolutely amazing. So they talk about an Australian billabong that you'd expect a bunyip or a crocodile or God knows what um, to come out of. Uh, but this is on Funnel Creek. And so there you have my traverse of the old murder highway, the, the old notorious Marlborough to Sharina stretch. Um, and it definitely didn't go according to plan. Um, little could I have known that I was going to drive into, you know, the Tempest to end all Tempest. Um, I literally drove probably 300 odd, nearly 300 kilometers um, in torrential rain um, that stopped and started out of nowhere. Um, just a straight 300 kilometer electrical storm. Um, on a road that um, was, you know, barely, you could barely call a road um, in a lot of places. Um, but I guess it was an experience and now it's something that I can tick off my bucket list. But as a final thought, something that really stuck in my mind from doing the old murder highway um, is that I'm no stranger to back roads, no stranger to, to country roads. And I do know that a lot of Farm workers take great pleasure in shooting holes in uh, road signs and, and things that they see on the side of the road as they're driving through the country. Uh, but it seemed to be that every sign, literally everything that was along this road was just pockmarked with bullet holes. At one stage I even saw um, a bit of a trigonometrical marker uh, that was marking the boundary of two different council divisions. Um, it was a big concrete post that had been put in the side of the highway and it was literally blown to bits um, where it had been used as target practice. But one specific spot just prior to Funnel Creek, uh, there was a huge road sign that had Marlborough and Rockhampton on it. Um, and I literally had to pull up and get a quick photo in the rain of this sign because it had been turned into Swiss cheese. Now, as I sort of walked a little bit further back down the highway just having a bit of a look um, there was a bit of a roadside verge and something just popped out of the gravel and, and dirt and bits of grass that were on the side of the road and I'll just grab it here um, now I'll hold that up for everyone to have a quick look at if you can see that now according to the head stamp it's a bullet cartridge uh, it's a 223 round um, manufactured in 1994 um, in the Republic of China. Now this was sitting on the side of the road, probably 20 or 30 meters away from this absolutely pockmarked sign. And I'll chuck the photo of the, the sign up right here. Now this was sitting there on the side of the murder highway. Now considering the number of shootings that had occurred, especially with 22 style bullets, um, I picked this one up as a bit of a keepsake. So this one's going home with me as a, a bit of a souvenir of my time down the murder highway. Um, but like I said, uh, it, it didn't go according to plan. I didn't get off um, the horror stretch before uh, darkness finally set in, which meant that I had to negotiate the Serena Range, which is a, a massive undertaking uh, in itself. I'm, I'm assuming even in the, the daylight, let alone at nighttime with it pouring down rain. Um, but I did come off the old Marlborough to Serena stretch in one piece. I, I survived the murder highway. So I hope you've all liked the video. Again, like um, and share this video um, if, you've, if you've enjoyed watching it. And I'll catch you tomorrow night for another great ghost story. Thanks for joining us.